Hey there, brother. This is Steve Horseman with Good Guys to Great Men. How are you today? Hey, I wanted to read you a question I got from a guy in email today. Sometimes my video topics come from emails or posts we get in Facebook, and there's a perfect question a guy asked here. It's one of the most common questions we get about this whole mountain lion thing. And so I have it up here in front of me on my laptop. I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to answer the question in this video. Hopefully, it'll be short and sweet and get right to the point, because this question is right to the point. He says, hey, Steve, in this clip, it was a YouTube clip that you were making about the mountain lion. You say that a man should take nothing personally, that his wife's outbursts are like waters off a duck's back, that it speaks to his confidence and self-assurance and ultimately great man energy. So here's my issue. Isn't this condoning these outbursts and character assassinations delivered by your wife counterproductive? Is it our role as a great man to grin and bear abuse of this sort because women do that and you can't take it personally? So a man's role is simply to be her emotional sounding board? That doesn't gel with my instincts for natural justice. However, I'm acutely aware that as a soon-to-be happily divorced man that I may be hypersensitive to what many may call this toxic or abusive behavior. And if so, would any, why would any self-respecting man tolerate it for sex, for companionship, intimacy? How can you have any of that if you're being verbally castrated on the daily? Again, I feel like I'm missing something. What are your thoughts? So here's my answer to the question. And when I did reply to him in person, I told him there's two steps to this process. First of all, nobody needs to accept toxic, abusive, castrating, uh, emasculating behavior. We treat and train other, we train other people how to treat us. We train other people how to treat us. There, there's this muddy water that because you're married and you have this, this person in your life called wife, you think that you're somehow trapped and you're a victim of being abused or castrated or criticized or what character assassinations or outbursts. You're not. You're not. And so there's two steps to this. One, if you're an angry man, if you're feeling insecure, if you're feeling down on yourself, if you don't like yourself much, if you're feeling insecure and anxious and overreactive, Step one is for you to fix that stuff because you cannot train anybody how to treat you when you, you, you yourself are not secure. You don't feel a strong sense of mature um, groundedness in yourself. If you are not whole, any amount of criticism or emasculation or assassinations, any kind of abuse you get from anybody, no matter who it is, you're not going to deal with it well because you're going to take it personally and you're going to feel so butthurt you cannot respond in a way that would train that person how to treat you. Step one is what we work on in our coaching programs is to help you get secure and confident and feel self-reliant and so whole inside that you begin to get amused at when other people are starting to treat you badly. There's something, some people say, well, I get to treat you badly because if you can't take me at my best, you don't deserve me at my worst. Well, I say bull crap. Maybe if I can't accept you at your worst, maybe you shouldn't be so freaking horrible. And that's one viewpoint. A, ha a happily divorced man and a, sec a secure man who feels grounded in his masculinity sees all attempts to cut him down, to criticize him, to knock him down, assassinate his character. He sees them as kind of humorous. He doesn't see them as real attacks, real threats to his security and his sense of peace and well-being. He doesn't see it. It just doesn't come across that way. This is not arrogance. This is like a father having a five-year-old saying, I hate you, daddy. You're a poopy head. I hope you die. You're the worst daddy ever. And that daddy goes, hmm, consider the source. Just don't be late for dinner, cupcake. And that's what I want for you when you feel like you're being having your character assassinated, you're being abused or criticized by anybody. I don't care if it's a boss, a coworker, your wife, anybody. Step one is to become full, to become full with yourself, with your own sense of inherent worthiness and value and, and security. And when you get that way, when you become more confident, naturally confident in who you are, then step two is possible. And step two is where we get to train others how to treat us. Why would any self-respecting man stay in the same room with somebody who is just using him as an emotional sounding board? How about an emotional whipping boy? If it's constant and horrible and personal and vicious, why would any self-respecting man not just grin and say, I don't think so, cupcake, not today. 
we can talk later when everything is calmer, when we're both calmer and this isn't a personal attack, but I'm not doing this. He can walk out of the room. He could leave her. He can go rent an apartment. He can get divorce papers. He can he's calmly and self-assuredly tell her, I want a relationship that's based on better behavior. I want a relationship that's based on calmness, peace, happiness, mutual respect, and adult-like behavior. I want us to be mature with each other. I want us, to be, want us to be compassionate and kind to each other. And when you're not doing that, I can't hear you. You're operating at a frequency that I don't process. And I know you've got problems, baby. I know you've got some pain you're processing and you're mad at me about things that have happened in the past, but this is no way to fix it. Continually trying to beat me up and knock me down with criticism and character assassinations will not stand. It simply won't stand. Almost like you're talking to your daughter. You have to be so strong that that kind of stuff does not even bother you. And you can say the kind of things that can train another person how to treat you. The scary thing here is that there could be a situation in which she says, I am never going to be that person for you. I am never going to be calm with you. I am never going to take the pressure off you. I'm going to continue to pressure you and criticize you until you get yourself into shape. To which I laugh. <laughs> what a great proposition that is. Why would any man decide to stay in that relationship, at least in that same room. If you want to train other people how to treat you, you have to first fill yourself up to a point of confidence and groundedness and peace and maturity inside yourself so outside attacks all seem curious and amusing to you. Step number two then is begin to train other people how to treat you. If you want to talk more about this, you can fill out an application, apply for a coaching consultation. Let's pick apart the specific stuff you're going through. I want to hear the words. I want to hear the actual case study. Is it in the kitchen when it happens, late at night? Is it in the bedroom? Tell us what it is so we can break down that situation and tell you what step one is for you, what it looks like, and then what step two behavior is to help start training other people how to treat you the way you want to be treated. I hope that helps you, brother. Have a great day. Bye-bye.